All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about training, shaping, pruning your fig trees. And I think this is the perfect example is this tree right here in front of me. This is a, a Ron de Bordeaux fig tree that I've got. And I think what's so amazing about it is that it's really just growing outwards rather than upwards. And sometimes figs have that natural habit. Other times, like I've noted here with this Brianzola Rosso, you can see this shoot is just growing straight up in the air. I also have a Long de Oot over there, which I think typically has more erect growth. Whereas Ron de Bordeaux, is more of an outward horizontal grower. And this allows it to really maximize the sunlight in the area that it's in. Of course, in this spot, if I were to time the direct hours of sunlight, let's say it's about seven or eight hours. But I can actually have less or more of that to each part of the tree, depending on how I shaped it, trained it, or pruned it. And so in particular, this tree, you could see a bunch of stakes that we do every year. We stake every single fig tree I have to open up the form, to position each part of the tree away from each other so that I can maximize the sunlight to every single branch. Because if I can have more sunlight and the appropriate amount of sunlight to every single leaf, branch, bud on the fig tree, I can then maximize and have the most fruits possible in this given area. So if I have more fruits and more leaves, I should say, in a given area that receive the appropriate amount of sunlight, I can have the most fruits possible. And the only way to do that is actually to open up the trees pretty much horizontally. I can't have all the branches just growing straight up in the air. Uh, it just will take up too much space and it will shade out a lot of the other branches. But if the angle of the sun's coming in like this, well then if I have the branches actually growing outwards, it can hit all parts of these branches and even hit the center of the tree. And all the different parts of the tree that are now growing away from each other with the help of stakes. Now I did do a little bit of pruning on this tree. Um, if you saw the tree this time, or I should say this time last year, or even in the fall, we had a lot of growth in here. And I took out really two main branches. You could see down in here, this was one of the main scaffolds down here at the base, or one of the main trunks of the tree, one of the older trunks that was also the tallest. And so it was actually growing up in this area of, uh, of the house. And so it was that tall and I said to myself, all right, I don't want the tree to get that big. I wanna be able to pick the fruits and I wanna be able to maintain the size of the tree. But I can't do that if the tree is too tall. So I took it out all the way to the base. Rather than doing this detailed work up here at the top of the tree, it's better to do cuts that are more extreme lower down on the tree. If you get that right, you're gonna put your tree in the right state of hormonal balance. It's gonna fruit really well in the next year and it's actually gonna grow a lot slower. If I come in here to the tops of the branches and I do all this detailed work and head back a lot of the branches, or if I take a chainsaw and just cut a, you know, at a certain height, just cut all the branches back to a certain height, the tree's gonna respond the next year by just growing even taller than it was before, and it's not gonna fruit that much. Maybe it, not, it won't fruit at all, and that's probably one of the most common reasons I see people not get their fruit trees to actually fruit, is they do too much winter pruning. It messes with their hormones. There's a hormone telling it to grow, and there's a hormone telling it to fruit. And so if you do excessive winter pruning, especially heading cuts, if you head back these branches by a third or more, you're gonna really struggle to see fruit set the following year. It's all in the buds here at the top on the fig tree. The apical and lateral buds have more of this hormonal component that allows them to stay within the right balance, to fruit um, and grow slower at the same time. And so that's gonna allow you to be able to control the size. And so if we have a tree that's too big, you take the biggest one out all the way at the base. You don't do the little detailed cuts here at the top. You go all the way down here at the trunk of the tree or the scaffolds of the tree. If you have a little bit of a trunk, go to the scaffolds and take out a scaffold or one of the trunks all the way down here at the base and do that on a yearly basis. That recycles the size of the tree. You take out the largest one, then a new one comes up in its place. You take out the largest one, then a new one comes up in its place. And so. That's really what pruning fig trees is all about, is maintaining the size while also making them 
productive at the same time. Thinking about light um, every time you make a cut, thinking about the orientation of the sun and thinking about how you can position each of these branches. I would much rather stake a branch rather than prune it. If I can keep this branch here in place, well then we have that same message that I said earlier in the video, where now I have leaves and fruit in this area of the tree, but if I take it out, well I no longer have those fruits. And so if I can have the most leaves and the most buds in a given area, maximizing the sunlight, I can have the most fruits possible. So I would rather, instead of doing the little detail cuts up here, think about each of the cuts down here at the base, position the rest of them, and allow me to use the stakes to actually get the maximization of the sunlight that I want. And it's really that simple. Um, you know, the pruning is so easy, in my opinion. If you just think about it like that, and think about it in the form of, of using stakes first, use a stake before you use your pruning shears. And if you do those, those things, you listen to that message, this becomes so simple. And I'll just show you really quickly. Here's the form of this Rondé Bordeaux. And you can see just how beautiful that is. It's coming out as far out as I can get it. Now you can bend the branches even lower if I want it. There's no disadvantage to that, but putting them on this wider horizontal angle is gonna allow the sun to come in this way to not only hit this part of the branch, this part of the branch, this branch, that branch, this branch, here. And so I'm gonna get so much more fruit set, even along the branch where it might even be a little bit bare in here, it's gonna fill in and make use of that sunlight and be able to fruit. So it's really about, in my opinion, positioning the branches, but also making the right cuts down here at the base, cutting out some stuff in the middle, it's just, it's that simple, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button for me. Hit that like button. See you for the next video. Take care.